Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. So what does food mean to you? Well, join me this week as my special guests are grill master Derek Taylor from SmokyWoodsBBQ.com, and he's going to share with us some of the ultimate tips for your backyard barbecues and grilling. And have you ever thought about throwing an Olympic watching party. Well, right now, everyone seems to be occupied with watching the Olympics in Paris, France. And my next two guests also are going to help us with some ideas for throwing an Olympic party, an Olympic watching party. You can actually do these types of parties anytime, but you know, have an Olympic theme party. But these are so pertinent because the Olympics are on for the next few weeks. And my special guest, Jacqueline Lawrencell, who's a chef, is going to come up with some dishes to serve. And also Anne-Marie Schumacher is going to help us with some party planning tips. She's an event planner. So stay tuned for the interviews. And my special guest today is Anne-Marie Schumacher from, she's a lifestyle blogger and she's from, her blog is called Make Every Day an Event. So I'm sure you can guess what she's going to be talking about, but Anne-Marie's on today, especially because everybody's watching the Olympics and it's a great reason to throw a party and use the Olympics as a theme. And Anne-Marie's going to help us with some ideas on throwing an Olympic theme party. So, you know, you can have a party while you're inviting friends, family over to watch the Olympics. Anne-Marie, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So tell us, as I said, I know everybody's watching the Olympics and it's great because, you know, there's that time difference. So they have rerun the, they rerun the day stuff if you weren't able to watch it. And so it's on pretty much constantly. Um, So it's definitely, I think, a great, um, excuse to put together a get together for family and friends. What kind of, I know you're an event planner, so uh, well experienced in that. So tell, give us some ideas on how we can make this party. So since it's all, you know, since the, the, an Olympic watch party is kind of all about obviously watching the games, you don't necessarily want to have like a sit down dinner or something where you can't be kind of up and about and milling around. And so one of the things that I pulled together that's featured on Make Every Day an Event um, is a charcuterie board uh-huh. that features the big rings. And so not only is it something that's kind of fun and clever and cute as your guests arrive that you can kind of look at and that you can kind of pick at, but it's also relatively healthy. Right, right. That's a good idea. So a charcuterie board in the shape of rings. So is this something like people can purchase or? You, no, you- it would be something that you can pull together. So the oh, rings okay. are you know, blue, black, red, yellow, and green. So think about things like foods that are those colors. So for the blue, you know, Uh kind of blueberries are basically a natural choice. And what I like to do is put a ramekin, which are those little white cups in the middle, like get five of those because there's five Olympic rings and, and position those within your board. And so that way it'll kind of give you like a natural pattern to follow. Right. So then right. you can just like for the blue, like again, I said like blackberry or blueberries are a natural choice. The next ring is black. So you could do like blackberries because they're in season right now. Um, you could also use like black figs for some additional flavor. Um, for red, I use strawberries, but obviously there's loads of options. You could use raspberries, raspberries, you could use red cranberries, um, dried cranberries, you could use red apple cubes. There's like so many choices for the red. You could use uh-huh. cherries. Uh Um, yellow cubed pineapple looked really great on our board. And then green, I kind of chose honeydew melon and seedless grapes, but kiwi would also be a great option. And so from there, you can kind of fill in what I did was I filled in with white snacks. So, um, I did things like popcorn and, um, I, yogurt covered raisins, um, some uh, yogurt covered pretzels, even like pound cake, because then in the ramekins, I like to put fruit dip. And so that way people can dip and, um, you know, kind of just graze on that the whole entire night. It's a great thing for your party. Exactly. That's great. And it's, it's, it's something good. It sounds like 
if you want to have a party, it doesn't mean you're going to have to have people over for dinner. It could be after dinner, before dinner, right? Because it's kind of like a grazing thing. Absolutely. Because so, again, the whole, the main focus is obviously watching the games watching and seeing, you know, um, who's winning medals and what the medal count is and how the athletes are doing. So you want something that you can kind of be, um, you don't have to be stationary at a table that you can, you know, be up and milling about and that type of thing. Exactly. So people can be walking around. That's a great idea. Any other tips for an Olympic? Um, uh, yeah. Another good idea that I found, because obviously you kind of want a centerpiece too, and what's in yes. the iconic kind of icon um, is the Olympic torch. And so uh -huh. what I realized was just very cheaply at the dollar store, you can get a Pilsner beer glass, which is kind of that same shape yes. as the Olympic torch. Uh -huh. And what I did was used some um, gold metallic spray paint and spray painted the Pilsner glass. So it really did kind of look like the Olympic torch. And then if you use long flowers um, that are in like the shades of a flame, so, you know, um, yes. just the and the yellows and maybe even some greenery, like some um, status and that kind of thing in there. You can craft a uh, torch centerpiece that looks really cute and clever that really adds a lot of um, festivity to the party as well. Uh-huh. That's great. That's great. That's great. All great tips. Any last words for anybody? Well, and then just some simple things. If you want to keep it like super simple, I mean, yeah. you can get off of Amazon, you can get some really cute picks that either are in the um, flags of the various countries, or you can get picks that actually look like fireworks because fireworks are always such a big part of the opening and closing yeah. ceremonies for the yes. Olympics. If you want to stick those into the fruit, or if you want to stick those into like cupcakes or something very simple, you can do just a few simple touches with maybe some of your favorite hors d'oeuvres and appetizers just to add some Olympic flair to it. Oh, that's great. All great ideas. And I love them because they're simple ideas. They're not, and they're, they're simple, but they're not anything that's going to take a long time and people yeah. are going to have to cook and do yeah. all that. You I mean, know, it still you, is summer. So you still want yes, to just enjoy yourself you and you don't want to have to worry about a whole exactly. bunch of stuff. You want to yeah. enjoy the party yourself too. So you can do that. That's great. Great. All great tips. Um, Amory Schumacher from make every day in event.com, right? Yes. yes. Thanks so much for being here. And we'll hopefully have you back in the near future for some other event planning tips. Great. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Discover the secrets of authentic Italian cuisine with the Basic Art of Italian Cooking book series. These beautifully crafted cookbooks take you on a culinary journey throughout Italy. And you can get your copy today at marialiberati.com or artoflivingprimamedia.com or your favorite bookstore. Taste the passion, savor the flavors, because cooking is an art. And my special guest today is Derek Taylor. He's a grill master and a barbecue enthusiast, a barbecue competitor, but he's also president of this really interesting company. It's called Smoky Woods Barbecue. And I thought it was so pertinent, especially because it's summertime and everybody's got their grill out. Not like everybody really all knows how to grill. So um, I thought it'd be great to have Derek on because he's going to give us some pointers also. And tell us about this great company, Smoky Woods Barbecue. Derek, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Maria, for having me. I'm so excited to be your guest today. Oh, yes. So tell us, um, you know, I was telling you before we got started, I was so impressed. I was reading about you and about the company. So I guess let's go back to the beginning, because I know yeah. you're a person that's really passionate about grilling. And that's how you started your company. So how did you get started in grilling? Yeah, no, that is a great question. So I grew up in Texas. Uh -huh. um, and so a lot of people would just assume that maybe it's in my in my blood, um, right. but it was much later, uh, it, probably around when I was about 25 years old or so, uh -huh. my dad, his brother, so my uncle and I, we would do, and one of my brothers, we would do an annual barbecue competition, just one a year, uh, really kind of backyard barbecue cooks. And uh, that's what started to get me interested in it, is seeing that there's this whole world of Com competitive food and, and and competitions around barbecue 
And so I did that with them. And then shortly after that, that first competition I did with them, I decided to buy a, a ceramic style cooker, a big green egg is specifically is oh, what yes. I bought. And uh -huh. I just started to learn and cook and make mistakes and try, uh -huh. try to get better and really kind of fell in love with it uh, from that point in time. And uh, and then I moved uh, to Wisconsin. My, my wife's from Wisconsin. So I moved here and when I first moved here, I really didn't didn't know anybody in Wisconsin. And so I saw that there was a local barbecue competition. Um, and so I decided to enter the competition, my first one on my own, and uh, really as a way to kind of meet people. I wanted to sort of just see who I could connect with and meet at, at this barbecue yes. competition. And, huh? and uh, that's kind of what got me going down the path now that I'm, that I'm in now. Wow. And how did you... Um... How did you decide to start this company, Smoky Woods Barbecue? As I was cooking and competing, one of the things that I started to notice was how much uh, the wood fuels, so charcoal and, and, and wood chunk and chip um, mm -hmm. and stick products like that, how much it impacts your cook based on if it's a quality product versus if it's not as quality or if it has too much moisture in it versus having the right and so I started to realize like it really matters and it makes your cook more predictable. And so, you know, I got the opportunity to start this company, Smoky Woods, um, to make our own wood products. Uh, so we make all of the chunk, chip, stick, charcoal, and pellets. Right. Uh, so really kind of anything you would need, uh, no matter what kind of cooker you have. And right. really our the, the focus and goal of that was to make quality products that you know are going to perform the same way every single time you cook to be able to control what you can control because it's it's hard enough as it is to pull off an outdoor cook and it helps to have good wood products. Exactly. So I thought it was so interesting because I know a lot of people that are really into grilling, they're always looking for these chips with the, you know, pecan or apple. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of those, right? You have pecan chips. And so they impart an aroma to the food that you cook with, right? They really do. You can tell a difference uh, between what species of wood you're cooking with and how that Im impacts the flavor of the food. And uh -huh. so we have really all of the, the main kind of barbecue wood species that you would want to see. We have apple, pecan, hickory, oak, post oak, cherry. Uh, we also have blends. Uh, uh -huh. And so we'll, we'll, we have an ultimate blend that has maple, hickory, and cherry all kind of blended together. Right. We have the same thing in pellets. We have a couple different blends in the pellets as well. And so, yeah, it, it really does. You can, you know, you can notice a difference. And, and if you're cooking a steak, you know, maybe you want to use a mesquite, uh, a hardwood uh, huh? for something like that, as opposed to if you're doing pork. Um, or chicken, you want to maybe do a lighter smoke, something like an apple or uh, or maybe a, a cherry or a pecan, something, a fruit wood that, right. to help give it a, a different flavor profile. So it really does make a difference. Oh, well, yes. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. Um, there are some, like I said, that do know, and they're always telling me they're looking for the chips with a different, you know, sense to them. Um, aromas to them, but not everybody mm -hmm. realizes it and it does make a difference. So yeah, I would definitely recommend if anyone wants to, I guess, amp up their grilling and really get into it to try some of the flavors that you have at Smoky Woods Barbecue. Um, so I guess some of the things I wanted to ask you too, and it sounds like uh, the one thing I wanted to say is you got into that company because you knew it was really important, the quality of the wood, right, that you use. And it sounds like you wanted to give that to everybody else, give them the possibility of using the higher quality wood. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I knew it was important. And I had learned that over about 10 years of of cooking and competing and, and also doing some catering jobs around uh, the Wisconsin area where I am. And so I wanted other people to have to just know if they're buying our product, the Smoky Woods product, they're going to get a, you know, precision cut kiln dried product that's going to work the right way every time. Exactly. So tell us, you know, I wanted to give people some, um, some tips on grilling and wanted to ask you some 
I had some questions I put together. I thought these would really yeah. help people that are grilling. So tell us, are there any like common mistakes that people tend to make when they're when they're grilling and and how do you think they can avoid them? Yeah, no, it's a great question. One of the funny sayings, but it's true is, and, and, and if you're looking, you're not cooking, uh, is the, the saying. <laughs> and so if you're doing, especially this is true with, with, with your smoking. So if you're doing an offset cook that takes longer, I mean, the more you have that, that top of the grill open or the top of that smoker or the top of that pellet smoker open, uh, it's not holding in the temperature and it's going to reduce the temperature of the grill and, and it's going to impact the cook. So if you're looking, you're not cooking. So what I say is if you're doing a longer cook, just trust as long as you're managing your fire. And if you're, if, if you're cooking on a pellet smoker, that's easier these days because they have kind of a digital temperature reading. And many times you can even program these some things through your phone with a right. Bluetooth connection. Um, but if you're cooking even on like a, a Weber cook or, or a ceramic style cooker, like a big green egg or something like that, let, let the, let the food cook and just check it, you know, intermittently. If it's a longer cook, if you're doing a, a pulled pork or a brisket, just don't check it too often. That that's one thing I think is important. Another is I think having a having a good meat probe, a temperature probe, uh, yes. of some sort. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different uh, models out there and different ones that are great. But it really helps to be able to quickly check the temperature, see where you are, and then close the grill again and let it continue its cook. Um, so that's that's a big tool I would recommend using is is finding a good quick read. Uh, uh, meat thermometer. Okay, great. And I just want to mention too, we kept talking about your products. People can find them at smokywoodsbbq.com, right? Is that, that's the website for people Absolutely. to find them. So do you have any, um, I guess, favorite grilling techniques for, for different types of meat? Is there any kind of that you can share with us? Absolutely. Yeah. I think on any of like your, um, so we'll, we'll say sort of your steakhouse uh, stars. So like a, a steak or a pork chop. I prefer direct heat on that, okay. meaning charcoal with some wood chips or chunks in there to create that smoke flavor and do it directly over direct heat. Um, and you can do those quickly. You can, Just like you do burgers or hot dogs, you can do a quick cook on those where maybe you're, you're keeping it a minute aside and you're rotating it until it's done. Um, right. That's how I prefer to do those sorts of proteins. If you're and, and and same thing with vegetables, you can put asparagus or broccoli or even potatoes um, on on a direct heat like that and really get some nice char. Let it develop that that crust, not where you're burning it, but to develop a little bit of a crust and a char flavor to it. That's a great way to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're doing that, one of the bigger meats, a bigger protein, like a whole right. chicken or a brisket or a, a pulled pork, you know, a pork butt um, or ribs, I prefer offset. So more smoking than direct heat grilling. Um, and so you can set your cooker up, whatever kind of cooker you have at home to do an offset smoke uh, for a longer period of time. So you're there, you're looking at three to 10 hours, depending on what the protein is and how long that takes. But the reason for that is you don't want to, those bigger meats can have a tendency to dry out and to get uh, not as tender if you're cooking them too direct, too fast, too hot. Whereas if you're going to let them smoke over a longer period of time, it's going to help that, that those, the, the fibers in that meat break down and render the fat in that meat. So that you get a really nice, juicy, you know, fin tender finished product at the end of that cook. Oh, that's great. So I just want to mention again that we're talking to Derek Taylor, grill master, and he's sharing some tips with us for grilling. So Derek, the other thing I want to ask, I thought I saw on your website, do, do you have some barbecue sauce or marinades or something? You do. So I, do. Yeah. I was just going to ask you, do you have a favorite rub or marinade for, for grilling? So maybe you can tell us about that. I'm sure it's something that you had your hand in. So that you developed. So, cause you're so passionate. Yeah, about you, grilling. It's, I think a lot of people at home will appreciate this too. Uh, so I came up with the recipes for, we have two uh, rubs or dry rubs. One is a 
kind of salt, pepper, garlic blend. Um, and we call that the, the come and smoke it rub. Um, and then we also have a all purpose, the up north all purpose rub, which is your kind of classic all purpose rub. And both of these recipes, uh, my wife and I created during COVID when we were all kind of locked down and and at home, uh, we had to find something to pass the time. So we started experimenting and buying uh, different uh, r different spices and blending them together to come up with a signature rub. And we ended up coming up with that all-purpose rub first. And then we came later to do uh, the, the, the beef rub, the Texas beef rub I mentioned. Uh -huh. And so we have both of those on our website, as well as we came up with a recipe for our sauce, which we call the Midwest made barbecue sauce uh -huh. and ours is a vinegar based sauce. So it, it's a, a thin sauce, uh, similar to what you'd, you'd expect out of kind of a Kansas city style barbecue sauce. Uh -huh. um, great sauce complements uh, really anything really well. Um, uh -huh. So those are the three that, that we offer. So I love using our products, of course, um, and what we do. Um, I also think if, if you're into, if you like spicier uh, foods or finishes, uh, right. There's some great, uh, you know, jalapeno glazes out there on the market as well. Oh, um, different ones you can get. But one of the ones I like a lot is called Big Wicks. It's a mesquite smoked jalapeno glaze. And they actually use our mesquite wood products in their process of smoking the jalapenos <laughs> for their glaze. And so that's another great one to, to, to use. Oh, that's great. And again, you can find the sauces and stuff that he spoke about first you can find them at smokywoodsbbq.com so i wanted to ask you do you have any favorite sides to serve with grilled meats that you would recommend yeah absolutely i love doing i love potatoes and i love doing kind of slicing the potatoes and grilling those with salt and pepper keep it simple um i think that's a great way and never be afraid of butter. Um, I mean, butter is a great compliment to anything and it helps uh -huh. create some extra fat there through the cooking process to help things from drying out or, or burning too quickly. Uh, I also would love to do grilled asparagus or grilled Brussels sprouts, right. uh, where you eat, get a little char on there. And, and by the way, one of the tips is, is if you're doing something and you get the right level of char, but maybe they're not quite as tender yet as you'd like them to be on the vegetables, or the meat for that matter, you can put them in foil, uh, wrap them in aluminum foil and, and create an indirect cook there where it's not gonna continue to char the, the vegetable or the meat, but it'll still allow it to cook to that right tenderness, that, you know, good snap on the asparagus or the broccoli that you want. Oh, that's great. And that was gonna be my next question about grilling vegetables. How do you suggest, but I love that you said simple, keep it simple. Because that's definitely the best way. Because if you have all, you know, the different sauces on the meat, you kind of want that, I think, to be like the star of the show of the plate. And then you have the the side dishes, but they're kind of, you know, simple. So they're not going to overpower the the wonderful sauces that you know, flavors that you have with the meats. So I guess so once you've done the uh, the grilling, how and this is not i think this is probably the least favorite part of everybody including myself of the grilling how any tips on keeping your grill in top shape and keeping it clean absolutely it's so important uh to any yes. cooking whether indoor or outdoor to have a good clean cooking surface um what i like to do is while the grill is still hot uh -huh. i use a non-wire bristle um scrubbers so the wire bristle scrubber scrubbers there while they do a good job uh right. there's a lot of reports you can read about this where those bristles can break off and end up in your food and people have ingested these and oh it's my caused goodness major wow. internal injury you know injuries and, and people have had to get yes. emergency surgery it happens more frequently than i think people realize so i prefer a non-wire bristle non -wire cleaner bristles. there's there's different ones out there and just really soap and water um, uh -huh. and a hot grill is going to clean really, really well uh, if you're using that. You can also use, you can take a, if you've used aluminum foil in your cook, you can take that aluminum foil and kind of ball it up and even use that to help clean that, that uh, cooking surface. That'll do a great job as well. So, but the key is while it's hot. You want to try to so put some other protective gloves, whether you have kind of there's different styles out there of, you know, pit mitt type gloves or yes. even like welding gloves. I know a lot of people go buy a pair of welding gloves and uh -huh. use that so that you're not burning yourself. But make sure you're doing it while the grill's still hot. 
That's great. All good tips. And I like that tip of not that I like, but I'm glad you gave everyone a heads up about the wire bristled brush, because mm. that is really, really important important. So um so we've been talking to Derek Taylor, grill master. And he is the owner of SmokyWoodsBBQ.com. You need to go there. If you're grilling this summer or any time, you definitely want to try out these products and bump up your your grilling. Derek, do you have any last words or or uh, any anecdotes or anything you'd like to share with, with the audience before we go? Yeah, sure. I mean, one thing, the reason I love cooking, and and, and this is true indoor or outdoor, but you know, there's something about cooking that brings people together and outdoor cooking and creating the space and then being able to invite your family or your friends over. Um, it, it, very, I mean, it's hard to think of a time where you've been doing outdoor cooking, haven't had a great time or a great memory. And it's such a, there, there's so much, uh, you know, the memories that are created around a fire. And so I just encourage people to, you know, experiment with outdoor cooking and with live fire cooking uh, and the memories that'll help, help create um, the other thing too is don't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, and I'll give one anecdote. Uh -huh. um, early on that, I mentioned that we did a barbecue competition. Uh, my first one I had done on my own here in Wisconsin, and right. and uh, that barbecue competition it was it was kind of a mess. I had an old smoker that didn't work very well, and I uh -huh. I had a tent that kind of came down in the middle of the night, and I didn't end up having any sleep, and it was hot outside, and you uh -huh. know so. The, the bad part was the next day, most of the things that I turned in were a disaster. Uh -huh. but, but I one of the things we turned in was a pulled pork uh, entry into the competition. And, and we got a call, meaning we were placed in the top 10 in that particular uh, entry. We got eighth place in pulled pork and it, wow. and it hooked me. Yeah, <laughs> so that's yeah. Like, you know. it gave you hope. <laughs> but, you know, that's a great story. It shows you. <laughs> You have to just get out there and try it. And that was really a learning experience, right? Because I'm sure all that stuff that happened, it was a learning experience. And that's what you take it as. And you move on, you go to the next one and you try to improve what you did. But hey, you were even in eighth place. So that was great <laughs> after all that. <laughs> yeah, right. You're giving me a small silver lining to that cook. Like, okay, it's, there's something. Exactly. The there's something <laughs> there. That's great. Derek, thank you so much for all those tips and again you can find all these wonderful products if you want to bump up your grilling for this summer you know we still have some time left and even if i think we're going we might have an indian summer too so some of the fall you know you'll be able to grill also and uh you know check out smokywoodsbbq.com for some great products derek thank you so much for being here and all those tips thanks again thanks so much mary really appreciate it thank you hi this is maria liberati wishing you a happy summer and hoping that along with indulging in great food and drink you'll also indulge in my book series if you'd like to take a trip to Italy without leaving your armchair, get a copy of The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Holidays and Special Occasions, and The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Da Vinci Style. Peace, love, and pasta. And my special guest today is Jacqueline Lawrencell. She's a chef and healthy lifestyle coach. And I just want to mention for those of you watching the video, that is a beautiful panorama of Jacqueline. What did you tell me? The north side of Chicago? Correct. You're facing, yeah. that's the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, facing north. so those of you watching the video can, can uh, see this or look for the video it's on uh, our youtube channel also jacqueline thank you so much for being here and we specially invited you because summertime is picnic time and you had some great ideas for um picnics and really healthy picnic ideas so yes. um yeah so tell us some some of sure. your picnic ideas 
So sure. I mean, as a chef, obviously I love food (laughs) and I've been on a health journey and I've lost quite a bit of weight. So I didn't want to give up all of the fun things and grilling and all those great things that summer provide, especially picnics. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like being able, I'm lucky I live where the beach is part of the city. So we get to go to the beach regularly. That's great. And I, I love gazpacho because it's super quick and easy to make. It's one of those kind of dump and go, put all the ingredients in the food processor, chop up some extra because I like my gazpacho chunky. You know, I puree it up, add the chopped vegetables in, let it sit in the fridge and let the flavors meld. And then I just put it in little um, ball jars. Yes. And pack them up in in cloth napkins and put it in a a chilled. I have a really fun chilled picnic backpack. Uh Uh-huh. And I throw that in there and it's. Uh It's so delicious, but it's deceptively healthy because it's pretty much just vegetables and some olive oil. Huh? And then I like to get some fresh sourdough bread and throw that on the grill uh-huh. so that you have a little dip into it. Yes. And which I find, you know, super yummy. You can always add a little goat cheese too, if you want to add some cheese. Yes. Yes. I love that. And then I, um, Again, I don't drink often anymore, but I uh-huh. still like to have sangria or summer cocktails. And so right. I like to take my drinks and mm-hmm. freeze them for like a summer sangria. Uh huh. And then I take non-alcoholic red wine and a little bit of a Italian style blood orange soda. And then right. some, and then I like to top it off with like club soda. Uh huh. And, and you, when you put the frozen grapes in the, in the glass that, uh-huh. you, you know, that I, I like to use ball jars so they right. can seal well. Yes. And take, yeah. And then I pack that and then I've got some gazpacho and sangria and it's delicious. Yeah. It sounds yeah. really delicious. Yeah. So a lot of people tell me that they do freeze grapes and yeah. they just love that in the summertime. And it's great, as you just mentioned, for your mocktail or even just to put in drinks in, you know, sure. if you have even iced tea or healthy, yeah. you know, you're healthy or water, you know, keep this stuff chilled, but you actually have the added, you know, you have a grape there, a frozen grape instead of a plain old ice cube. Get your fruit too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're getting and your you fruit. And you don't, and it doesn't water the drink down. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's another benefit as well. It doesn't, it does not. So I know you had the gazpacho and for everybody. So gazpacho is a cold soup. Not if not everyone knows about knows that it is a cold soup. And just the way Jacqueline described it, it is cold. So it is great to take on a picnic, just put it in your thermos, like you said, but you have the gazpacho, the mocktail, and I think you had something else you were going to tell us. Well, I also like that. I love those little bento boxes they make these oh, days. Oh, yes, that's right. Apartments. And yes. so I love that because you can put in now, since that the theme of my picnic is Spanish, really in style right now, I would probably choose some Spanish style Serrano ham and maybe some Manchego cheese uh-huh. and maybe olives and things uh-huh. like that. And I love those little bento boxes because I can do a little bit of portion control. Yes. With without feeling deprived or, you know, feeling like I'm missing out. I just know that this is my box and I get to enjoy it is exactly everyone gets their own and you don't have to share. (laughs) Exactly. And bento boxes for if, if you don't know what they are, if you're living under a rock and have never heard of them, because I think everybody probably did. um, They're Japanese. That's what they use in Japan, right? For, for that's what they use for their meals to take to like work or if they're bringing their meals somewhere they use the bento boxes you can find them really they're sold now they've become they become almost commonplace here because they've become so popular and they are great for portion control you're absolutely right i think that's they're a great kind of way. like an adult think of a if think of a lunchable think of a right. lunchable <laughs> Like where everyone thinks got us containers and compartments or think of the old fashioned trays from the yes. cafeteria, but it's in a box form. And that's uh-huh. basically what a bento box is. And you can use it for anything you like, but exactly. I find it, I find it wonderful to take on a picnic and everybody gets their own and you can, everyone can even make their own before you go on the picnic. You could set things out like a buffet. People make their own no little idea. bento boxes, uh-huh. pack them up. And it's also great because those are, 
And one of the things I like about gazpacho or my mocktail or things like that is they're no cook. So you don't Uh have to worry about them spoiling. Right. If they get warm or things like that, because gazpacho really is just vegetables put in a blender. (laughs) Exactly. And and, and some garlic and olive oil and you let it sit in the fridge and the flavor flavors get better and better. And it's a great make ahead. Yeah, I like all that, all those tips, because as you said, they're not, you don't have to cook anything. There's no dairy or cream or anything that you have to be worried about somebody getting sick or spoiling. So it makes it no fuss and it's no fuss because there's no cooking in your kitchen too. So you don't have to turn any heat on. Right. But yes. It's going to be hot now today. So it actually makes me think I might want to go make some. Yes. (laughs) Yes, it's, it's a little hot today. It's a little steamy yes, in Chicago. It today, is. So. It's steamy in uh, where we're at on the East Coast also. It's definitely really hot and steamy. But anyway, any more tips before we go, Jacqueline? Because they're all great. Sure. I mean, the one thing I would say is I always believe a healthy lifestyle and deserves some indulgent treats. Uh-huh. And one of my all-time favorites from my childhood were frozen Snickers bars. Oh, there I you go. To- I used to go to a swimming pool and that was like the treat I could get. Uh-huh. I was allowed to get. And so I always recommend freeze the, you can freeze a favorite candy bar and stick that in your in your picnic basket as well. You want to try to keep things that are cold to help everything stay cold as long exactly. as possible. Exactly. And you know what else too? I've noticed they're making a lot of those candy bars in like mini forms. So they're really not that many calories too. If you're watching, you know, your diet or whatever, you could get the mini bars freeze yeah. them and uh, you can still have, you know, have a little bit of a, of an indulgent treat. That's great. Jacqueline, thank you so much. And Jacqueline, where can people find you? Do you have a sure. Website? Absolutely. My website is www.jacquelinelaurencell.com. Great. I can spell that out. It's a little long. It's uh-huh. A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E-L-A-U- R-E-N-C-E-L-L-E. You can find me at JacquelineLaurenSell.com. And in that place, you can find I have recipes. You can connect to my social media through that. And come join me on my Okay, great. All right, Jacqueline, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show. And thanks to my producer, Britton Roselle, and this week's special guest, Derek Taylor from SmokyWoodsBBQ.com, Chef Jacqueline Laurencell, and party planner and event planner, Anne-Marie Schumacher. And you can find me on Instagram at Maria Liberati, on Facebook at Chef Maria Liberati, on Pinterest at Maria Liberati. You can also find video of many of our podcasts at the YouTube channel, which is the Maria Liberati show and on Vimeo at Maria Liberati. You can also find my Gourmand World award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking at marialiberati.com at artoflivingprimamedia.com on Amazon and Kindle and really anywhere books are sold. And In the series is The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Holidays and Special Occasions, and The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Da Vinci Style. And if you follow me on Instagram at Maria Liberati, you'll have a chance to win one of my coffee table books, which those books are The Basic Art of Pasta, The Basic Art of Pizza, The Basic Art of Cocktails, The Basic Art of Coffee, The Basic Art of Experiencing Venice, and The Basic Art of Creating a Tuscan-Style Wedding. And you can also follow me on LinkedIn at mliberati and on Twitter or X at Maria Liberati. And until next time, peace, love, and pasta.